Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. In this video, I'm making a hanging light out of scrap wood. It's a bit of an experiment, so let's get straight into it. I was going to make it out of black wattle. I've got heaps of this. I've got a whole stack of it. But because the project is segmented pieces, it's a good opportunity to use up my smaller pieces of scrap camphor laurel. The first thing I'll do is mill the timber into strips. I can then cut segments from those to make rings out of. And then from those, I can form a cylinder for the main part of the light. I'm planing two edges 90 degrees to each other and um, from there I can cut strips from those on the table saw using a fresh new blade. That's the strips prepared. Next I'll use my wedgie sled to cut them into segments. Each ring will be made from 24 pieces and I'll make enough for eight rings. I may not use all the rings though. I'll start building them up into a cylinder and see how it looks. The wedgie sled does a great job of making accurate segments. I'm cutting one end of the piece on the one fence and the other end on the second fence. And the fences are set 15 degrees apart, leaving a 7.5 degree angle on either end of the segmented piece. That's enough of that nonsense, so let's make some rings. In the past when holding pieces together to glue up the rings I've used different methods with rubber bands and hose clamps and bungee cords but I reckon the easiest way is just using masking tape. Even though the joints are tight, it could still be slightly oval and not quite round, so I've cut a couple of sticks to length, and that's to keep the ring consistent. While I start on the next ring, I'll take a moment to tell you about the Maker's Mob 99 cent woodworking sale, which is our biggest sale of the year, where you'll not only get access to learn how to make some of my top woodworking projects, you'll also get over 90 woodworking tutorials with plans from YouTube's top makers like Jimmy DeResta, John Heise, John Peters, the Samurai Carpenter, and Frank Howarth, as well as myself. And right now, if you click the link in the description below, we're also hosting a two month router bit challenge where you can upload your own projects that you've made and compete with woodworkers at different skill levels from all over the world in order to win thousands of dollars in prizes from CMT tools and Taylor tool work. So click the link in the description below and learn woodworking from YouTube's top makers and take advantage of this 99 cent sale before it ends. And I'll see you on the inside. That's all the rings glued and the edges sanded, but before I glue them together, I'll take just one of the rings and I'll make that round with a circle cutting jig on the router. I've screwed a block with a center pin to the workbench and with a stick cut to the right length, I can center the ring and hot glue it in place. My circle cutting jig is nothing fancy, it's just a piece of old plywood that I drill holes in in the right place for the pin to locate. I'll route down so deep and then I'll finish the cuts with a pattern following bit on the router table.
I've not tried this before to release hot glue, but I thought it was worth a try and it worked great and it came straight off the ring as well. There's not much holding the rings together. The surface area of the glue joint is pretty small, so I'm keeping my hands well away from the router bit and going fairly gently. Now that the first ring is done, I'll glue the next one to it and I'll route that using the first one as a guide. Because the joints between the two layers are staggered, the ring is now much stronger and there's no real worry of it breaking up while I'm routing it. To save time waiting for the glue to dry, I started to glue two rings at once, one on the top and one on the bottom, and here I'm finishing up the last layers and I decided to go with just seven rings. That's looking pretty cool, next I sanded it with an 80 grit disc using a soft pad on my sander. I'm pretty nervous about the next part of the project. I'm going to make a pattern of holes into the cylinder. I did a few tests in plywood and I'm going with this one. I'll mark a margin either side and start drilling holes between the margins all the way around. The holes will save having to plunge the route a bit through the ring, which is much easier to do with the drill. It took two hours to drill them all and that will be the easy part compared to routing them. Before I started routing, I gave it a sand to remove all the furry bits and give me a clean surface to work off. This is going to be a lot of work, so I may as well try and get comfortable. My trim router doesn't plunge, so I'm rocking it on one edge of the base and just lowering it down carefully. It took a bit of getting used to, as the angle of the bit sticking out needs to be judged pretty well when lowering it down onto the surface. It was completely unintentional, but it was pointed out to me on Patreon and Instagram that the pattern is very similar to Carl Tite's black veneer panels. And as I got so far in, I'd already realized the same thing myself. Carl's pattern is quite a bit finer than this though, and he just goes through the veneer to expose the wood underneath where I'm going right through. Carl's panels look amazing, and if you haven't seen his videos, then check him out and I'll put a link in the description. I did get the odd piece break out, but it only took a couple of minutes to cut and glue new pieces in, and I was up and running again. I think I had around 10 fix-ups to do over the whole thing, so it wasn't too bad.
I didn't keep a tally on the time, but I think it took somewhere between six and eight hours. I had to stop about every hour or so for a break as my hand was cramping up. I reckon it looks pretty cool. Next I'll sand it with a soft pad again just to remove some of the furry bits. This is the light fitting I'll be using so next I need to make supports for it and for those I'll use these reclaimed brush box floorboards. The supports will be a grid across the top of the light so I'll cut some strips and make that next. To join the pieces I'll cut half lap joints with a dado set in my table saw. I'll put two joints near the middle quite close about four inches apart and then two more outside that about six inches away from the first ones. To fit the grid I'll position it using the segments in the light as a guide and to help center it and then mark it and cut off the ends. I thought the grid would add support across the whole circle stopping it from distorting and keeping it round. I haven't shown it here but I went back to the sander a few times to fit it just right. I decided to add a few pin nails as well as the glue just to the center strips. Next I'll cut some thin strips of camphor laurel and they'll make a rim around the outside to finish it off and add a bit more strength. The strips are one millimetre thick and I'll add two layers. I'll put some masking tape around to stop the glue from going everywhere and I'll trim that with a marking gauge. I don't have camphor laurel long enough to go all the way around in one go but I'll stagger the joints of the two layers and that will give it the strength. As part of the Makers Mob Rat a Bit Challenge we've partnered with Taylor Tool Works and CMT to offer the award winning Italian made CMT router bits and saw blades. CMT has the widest portfolio of router bits and saw blades on the market and received the perfect 10 by Wood Magazine. Taylor Tool Works carries the largest selection and has the best prices on CMT bits and blades. You can save 30 to 50% off on the bits and blades that I used in this video by shopping at taytools.com. Links are in the description below. In addition, use the code CMT10 at checkout to save an extra 10%.
That's the top rim done and off camera I put one on the bottom just the same. The last thing to do is put a piece in the middle of the grid to fix the light fitting to. I found this scrap of plywood from a past project that has a camphor laurel veneer on it and I cut a square off that off camera. It just needs sanding and then it's ready for some finish. Before I put the finish on, I removed a few straggly bits between the holes with a file and for the finish, I'm using boiled linseed oil. I thought I'd dip the light in the oil to get it into all the holes and I thought the oil would be the best bit to do that with as I can keep wiping off the excess after it's all been coated. For now I'll leave it with just the one coat of oil but when it dries thoroughly in a couple of weeks time I'll sand off any furry bits and spray it with varnish. Now I'm wiping off as much oil as I can and leaving it a while then doing it again. I used half a roll of kitchen paper wiping it down and then I safely discarded it by submerging it in water. A lot of light shades I see nowadays are very open with the ball being clear view, even more so than this one, but I decided that it did need diffusing, so I went shopping and I found this. I reckon that looks great and it really adds to the overall look. The light will live above our dining table, but first I need an electrician to move the old light fitting over a bit. So for now, I'll set it up in the workshop just to see how it looks. That was a really fun experimental project. I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. Tell me what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.